Fingers crossed, it snows again. Now that I have the powerful all-wheel drive. Welcome to Car Scene Korea. I introduce newly released Genesis Hyundai and Kia cars. And on my background today, I have 2024 Hyundai Santa Fe Hybrid Calligraphy Trim All-Wheel Drive, also known as H-Track for Hyundai in Loaded Option. That was a long name and an intro. Before you ask me questions about Santa Fe, I am pretty sure I have answers to all of them because I have over a dozen video of Santa Fe. That is including the exterior interior comparison video with this all new Santa to that of the Palisade, the test drive POB night drive, also comparing it to Gia Sorrento facelift, the brand new latest car, and also trunk measurements. <laughs> it is very scientific, isn't it? That being said, please do refer to my previous video because I have a thorough review of this car inside out. But today I pulled out the camera because I want to give you my unbiased first impression of what Santa Fe Hybrid is like. All that light breaking up behind me, GoPro flickering, so please do keep that in mind. That being said, if you are watching this video right now, I am test driving the car, so feel free to drop in the comment below anything you are are curious especially hybrid related questions because like I've said I answered pretty much all of them in my previous video I would like to talk about the hybrid and answer you about the hybrids in this video also it's my first time actually test driving the hybrid meeting the car in person as well the hybrid so I will tell you a bit about the exterior difference what's notably different we see a little bit of a design cue that H logo on the headlights and there are more H logos found in inside out before I shut off the lights I do want to show you the rear tail lights as well not something that everybody loves but I do prefer getting this crazy amount of trunk space sacrificing or giving up the tail lamp position elsewhere just like that look at this we get crazy amount of the interior space thanks to that lowered tail light and if it wasn't for that probably the trunk space would have been sacrificed somewhat unless Hyundai decided to put it vertically on the sides which would definitely remind us of the Cadillac Escalade don't you think that is another H logo found inside the vehicle so by putting that H logo underneath the turn signals are also lower but for the US market I believe that H logo also works as a turn signal too so it sits a little higher than that turn signal right there back to what I was saying I rather have the tail light sitting lower so I can get the larger trunk space I'll take that option anytime 24 7 and let me shut the lights off nope that's not gonna do that turn the car off but you see it turns on and it's charging the beauty of the hybrid i have this 360 view cam popped up right here as well and as you saw i turned it back on because you see it says ready i turned it back on because i want to show you how often the engine turns back on so right now it is fired up. The car is actually running right now. You'll soon find out in the video how often it gets fired up again. H-Track and H-Track is the all-wheel drive for Hyundai. Rest of the rear design, once again, I've covered it thoroughly in previous video or O's, I should say. There are a ton of them, so feel free to check them out. Well, let me give it to you from this angle. Just look at that. The side profile, it is just a completely the box as the very designer himself calls it as. Despite the design of the box that the Santa Fe is, it actually has really low coefficient of drag which is 0.29 CD and that is the number that we kind of see on EVs and that is really really low for your information and what does that low CD do? Well it helps with the low coefficient of drag which gets directly translated into better MPG, better fuel efficiency and also less of the resistance which also gets directly translated into 
to the NVH, which stands for noise, vibration, and harshness. So putting that all together, you can actually find there are just so many subtle things that's been put inside this Santa Fe, including this tiny little lip right here. It has that rear spoiler, like if you will, design right here. However, that is actually for that extra down to one hundredth, if not one thousandth of the CD in order to load all of that. If you are in the market looking for this all new Santa Fe, you probably have watched many videos, but I bet you never have seen this wheel just yet. This is a exclusively hybrid all wheel drive only wheel and we get 20 inch wheels on a hybrid now. Can you believe that? So this has that pixel. Well, I don't really want to use the word pixel here because that is reserved for Hyundai EVs, but there sure is a pixel design somewhat, right? Also a five spoke wheel, which never gets old. It's classic. I really do like it. 255, 45, 20. A 20 inch wheels and tires on a hybrid model. And of course it's a square setup, meaning it's got the same size all around the four wheels. 255, 45, 20. Well, when it comes to wheels and tires, which contribute a lot to how you perceive the drive, the ride quality of a vehicle, that 20, I don't know. Like, because if you go smaller wheels and tires, it's lighter, it provides meaty sidewall, thicker sidewall, I should say taller sidewall, which will also give you a better driving pleasure, which also converts into better fuel efficiency, MPG, right? The active air flash that is currently all open in order to suck the air in and also to cool down the engine and whatnot accordingly and also when that active air flap is shut off it is going to push out the air to sides also contributing and enhancing that NVH noise vibration and harshness now that I have the car right in front of me I want to show you what's underneath the hood because that's essentially what makes the largest difference of this Santa Fe to other Santa Fe's that we've had thus far right and don't worry i am coming back to the interior before i go on a test drive so lift it up right underneath the bonnet and hood and of course it gets the flush that flat batch that hyundai is putting on all of their recent hyundai cars so the latch is actually sitting somewhere here at the end of the emblem so push it and yes, of course, we get the gas lift. Nothing out of the ordinary things that we can definitely expect from Hyundai Motor Group cars. We see that 1.6 turbo hybrid together with a motor right here. So that is the mixture, the combination that we've been getting on all of the latest Hyundai Motor Group cars. Just to name a few that is including Tucson Carnival, K5 hybrid, the name, the list just goes on and on. Given the fact that this is not the biggest engine that Hyundai Motor Group has got to offer, it has a lot of space within the engine bay. Look at that. So it's quite spacious inside. So let me show you the rest. I know I've done it already on multiple times, but I've got to show you because not everybody watches all of my videos. So I've got to show you what the interior is like. And I am definitely coming back to the trunk too. So stay tuned and just check and see how massive that door is. I actually made a comparison video of this all new Santa Fe to that of the latest Hyundai Tucson facelift. Just the door size alone, they are two very different cars in its category. Although manual, there is a shade I love that it stretches out all the way to that bonus glass. That is actually huge. And this test driver is actually all tinted. I'm on the other side again, but I want to tell you about this from this angle because it's actually my first time seeing a Santa Fe that's got the tent around. So if you take a look at the second row window, that bonus glass that we get on the second row seat, you see the design actually does feel like it's part of the third row glass that we see over there rather than it is with the second row seat. So it kind of feels like it's divided right over there. So that portion is the windows together and that portion, the first and second row seats are the windows together. Let me go back and show you the interior once again. Perhaps you could see more of it from this angle. So the third row seat, and that is the half of the second row window. So that portion together versus that. Let me open up the doors. Once again, just check out and see how massive the doors are. And the test driver I have today comes with 
the captain's seat, meaning it's a six-seater car inside. Santa Fe comes in a five, six, seven-seater configuration. Five-seater, you get two seats in the first row seat, three seats on the second row seat coming in as a bench seat and no third row seats. And this is the six seater, two, 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 two seaters for the third row seats. And as for the seven seater, it's going to be two plus three plus two. And you can easily yank this guy up using that rope, pull this up. You get the third row seat just like this and I also have been inside the third row seats and it is super comfortable as well thanks to that box design as you can probably see from the video already so this is the third row seat all erect and the beautiful part is it's really easy for you to actually fold and unfold the seat just like that you just saw it i did it with one single hand and there is no problem of doing it whatsoever when it comes to the trunk make a good use of this clip so that this guy doesn't fly around hitting everything making all that rattling noise and you can actually use the button in order to fold the second row seat up and down just like that so individual ac for the third row seat even 220 volt outlet that will change accordingly to your market same thing on the left side there is the c type charging ports that hooks for the purse right there and you can use that button in order to let yourself out from the third row seat I like that LED lighting right here for the nighttime. All of the lighting is inside. Extra compartment space right here. The emergency kit. And this right here is for the battery, not the hybrid system. So it has been directed to the rear trunk. I did have a question about the hybrid's battery contributing to, to different storages when it comes to the Santa Fe. I was curious about that too, but right off the bat immediately i don't really feel any of the difference whatsoever to be honest there is no difference in terms of the interior space and as i just said i think i spotted one right here between the captain seats i'll go find out so there is a bit of a hump right here aha there we go so that's where the battery must be so i see a bit of a hump right in between the captain seats so it's not going to alter that much when it comes to the second row seat of course no difference whatsoever for the driver the first row seats but it might be a bit different for the third row seat i will find out about that too uh, when i get to test drive this car in depth and the second row seats get the ac vents on the side just like that that is like a genesis level the luxury level you can hang your purse groceries stuff like that it's quite useful this headrest too so pull this up you can actually use this as a coat hanger too so there is a lot of practicality put inside out of this Santa Fe there's the extra C charging ports here too as you can see it's convenience everywhere calligraphy <laughs> with a fancy tag so it is a loaded option the model that i am test driving right now that is the steering wheel interior design that we've been seeing all throughout nothing out of the ordinary no difference whatsoever when it comes to the interior of santa fe hybrid versus a regular ice internal combustion engine model the first row sunroof shade is actually all manual it is going to open up automatically but that shade needs to be manually closed after use the second row seat sunroof Gia Carnival recently got the facelift. The wide panoramic sunroof can actually be opened up even for the second row seat too. So fingers crossed, maybe we'll see that on the later models. Perhaps the facelift on new Santa Fe next time then. All right, so that's it for a quick look of the exterior and interior of this all new Santa Fe. And let's go check out the test drive, the unbiased, my first expression, impression of this 2024 Hyundai all new Santa Fe hybrid calligraphy H track all wheel drive model fully loaded option. I'm just doing it because I just like doing it. <laughs> Let's go, it's time for the test drive. And when it comes to Santa Fe, I always turn on the Ergo Motion seat. 
the whole body massage. Well, Hyundai does not use the word massage to describe the seat, but it essentially is a massage seat. It's been, I don't know, over a dozen video on Santa Fe already, so probably this is my 12th, if not more. But every time I hop inside a Santa Fe, regardless of the powertrain choices, it is just a pure joy. It is just so serene and cozy inside. It's so, so comfortable. And I just recently have test driven Tucson facelift. And as I also have mentioned this in that video, the gap between the Tucson and Santa Fe is really, really great. I feel like Tucson is much more closer to being a Kona than it is to Santa Fe and the other way around too. Santa Fe is much more closer to being a Palisade than closer to being a Tucson. Don't get me wrong, that is my thoughts on current models available on each trim. Come all new Palisade, that gap might be widened. Um, come all new Tucson, the gap between this all new Santa Fe and Tucson could be narrowed. So I only have driven this car for a few hundred meters now, but it's not all that difficult for anyone to notice the difference right away. This to that of, the gasoline model, hybrid versus gasoline. Well, first and foremost, I do hear the motor running. So I do hear the motor sound that is this car is giving me. I just also noticed that the car is currently in eco mode. I don't know if that is by default, it is. <laughs> because I just changed the drive mode. There is only eco, sport, and my drive. There is no normal mode on this hybrid so it seems like eco is the normal mode so eco is there by default so really curious the mpg kilometer per liter i will be getting with this car currently it's marked at 1.7 kilometers per liter it just doesn't make any sense of course it is because i did not start moving the car come back to very last video of this santa fe hybrid i will definitely mention that over there so sport mode i will definitely do test drive that too i do get a terrain mode because this is the all-wheel drive h-track hybrid i have for the test driver today so auto next is snow and mud and sand well these modes we have seen on other hand motor group cars i.e genesis fingers crossed it snows again it snowed crazy and super heavy when i was test driving the tucson facelift so so much for the snowy day hopefully it will snow again now that i have the powerful all-wheel drive engine is turning on and off automatically there is no separate mode or method for me to actually use the motor or engine it will just do everything on its own the car will do everything on its own it is pretty much the same feeling the way the hybrids are running it will only be the motor when you are moving slowly in cities and when you need power the engine will turn on and help you with the extra strength the powerful engine will engage when needed and i also have seen that the engine would also turn off during your drives on freeway when you are cruising of course i will definitely check that out if i'm lucky i will find that out on this freeway right now i am getting on the freeway and it's definitely time for me to test out the hda2 it is the latest technology it is the latest hda highway driving assist that hyundai motor group currently has and it is only limited to a very handful of vehicles the entire hyundai motor group cars just to name a few actually santa fe is the only car that gets hda2 from hyundai at the moment from Gia, it's only ev9 and all of the genesis get hda2 and that's also showing out loud what the santa fe means to hyundai santa fe got all the goodies you can ever get from the current hyundai motor group cars or hyundai cars i should say included along with the hda2 you get what's called 
HOD, which stands for hands-on detection. That means you don't have to shake your steering wheel in order to let the car know that you have your hands on the steering wheel. It used to be that way because previous Hyundai cars that came with HDA1, the steering wheel was torque feedback basis. So you literally have to input torque into the steering wheel in order for the car to know that you have your hands on the steering wheel. But that's not the case with the HOD. Only Santa Fe gets that. Kia Carnival facelift, for instance, did not get HOD. Santa Fe is just really great. It's got all the latest goodies and techs in the market that is currently available. So this is the best car, technically, that I can actually test drive at the moment from Hyundai Cars. I am on the freeway, nothing but a joy. Also, there's some BVM blind spot view monitor which will turn on according to the direction that you use the turn signals to. So it shows me which car is where, comes with the automatic lane assist. So press down on the turn signal, the car will change the lanes for you automatically. So I wanna show you this. You can probably see it on the monitor here, right? This. The engine and the motor have been working together consistently. So right now, if I let go of the accelerator, the car will start charging the battery immediately. So I have the displays showing right here and here as well. So check it out, see for yourself. But the transition and the way the car reacts, flawless, it is smooth. You don't feel a thing. There is no engagement and disengagement of the engine together with the motor whatsoever. It is very smooth and harmonious. It is very different from the early day hybrid models. I can tell you that for a certain. Even if I really tried, I don't think I would feel a thing. So the only way I could actually feel the engine engaging is when I floor the accelerator just to pick up the speed when I am merging into the lanes and all. That is pretty much the only time. So essentially, if you hear the roar from the engine, that's the only time. So even right now, I do have, I did gently tap on the accelerator, but the car would not turn on the engine. It is only the electric mode right now. But if I actually just floor it a little, Yep, of course, that's when the engine just gets fired up again and pushes the car forward. It just feels like that there has been engine running. The car responds immediately. I really am a big fan of hybrid cars, to be honest. I really feel like this hybrid narrows the gap in between the internal combustion engine plus the EVs. The hybrids have the best worlds of the two, both of them. You don't really have to have the struggle of charging your EVs. I know it's not for everybody, those who have chargers at home, charging an EV is no problem at whatsoever but still there are countries and people who relatively has less infrastructure that being said I really feel like these hybrids bridge the gap well between the internal combustion engines and the EVs if I were to get my next car most likely it will be a hybrid well, first and foremost, I do not have charger at home or charging facility. And that is the only reason why. If I don't have any problem with charging whatsoever, I would choose an EV in a heartbeat. I'm really quite surprised to see how Santa Fe just uses the electric mode when I am cruising down. Oh, wow. Like I am keeping my eyes on this for like at least a minute now. It's it's in the EV mode only. It only uses the battery electric mode. It will use the output from that one. And when the vehicle up ahead slows down, it's charging. Currently, right now, this is the EV car. Oh, wow. So time to check out the MPG. This is what I am talking about, ladies and gentlemen. So 14.4. 14.5 kilometer per liter. It's going up as I speak. And throughout the entire intro of today's video, I had this car running. As you heard from frequently shutting on and off of the engine, even with all of that, it's only gonna go up if I try harder. I will give you accumulated and overall fuel consumption at the end of this test drive, which will come last of the videos to come. So make sure you check that video out. 
this digital center mirror it really helps you a lot with that wider rear view right now it's super sunny there is no issue with the visibility whatsoever but under a poor weather condition when it's pouring rain when it's snowing heavy this digital center mirror literally makes a day and night difference it will show you things that you cannot with a conventional rear view mirror that will also come in handy when you have people sitting inside and also luggage loaded full because you cannot see through them right so this digital center mirror being located right next to the rear third brake light it will give you that clear visibility 24 7. unlike the reverse cam it's not located underneath where all the dirty water will drip down so this is relatively kept quite clean 24 7. also the camera itself is coated so when you actually pour the water on top of it there is not going to be any water droplet but it could get dirty from time to time so when it does nothing that a good wipe wouldn't do so speaking of that let me show you the rear view just like that so this is not a rear view cam so doesn't matter which angle i show it to you from i can show you the rear view so this is the digital center mirror and that is a conventional rear view mirror so you see the difference immediately and i cannot show it to you from every angle for the obvious reason voila digital center mirror just like that there is also the nvh that play a significant role which stands for noise vibration and harshness when it comes to drive the overall experience of how you perceive the ride quality and ride experience your experience inside this car it still has the same dual laminated acoustic glasses on both the first and second row seat of course the windshield and the sound absorbance uh, no canceling out the noise coming into the cabin all of this are shared among all of the all new santa fe so there is not much of a difference in that with that regards i will tell you all about what the hybrid is like in that video so make sure you come check that video out of course i will go through the mpg and all the nitty-gritty fine detail that i find along the way which my channel is all about as you guys know right don't forget to like and subscribe car scene korea if you did i will see you in the next video Bye bye and do not forget to drop leave any questions you might have about this santa fe hybrid mostly keep your questions to hybrids only because i have covered all of the other santa fe already all right that really is it i will see you in the next video bye bye